Randy Robinson here with Life Today TV, and we are with singer-songwriter Matthew West. Matthew, you've got a new album coming out called The Story of Your Life. That's right. I want to know a little, about, a little bit about your story, because I know a few years ago while you're singing, and basically you're a guy who's given your talents, your abilities, your time to, to sing to the Lord and worship and to sing songs about God to minister to other people. And then suddenly you couldn't sing. Tell me about that time. Well, it was certainly a, a season of my life that I hadn't planned for and no singer wishes for. It wasn't on my calendar uh, or on my list of goals to one day have vocal cord surgery. But um, I just had started having some problems with my voice. And I just sort of thought, ah, you know, my, my voice is tired, no big deal. And I continued down this path of preparing to make a new record which ironically uh, was going to be called Something to Say. And uh, finally, I went to the doctor's office, and the specialists in Nashville took a look at my vocal cords, and they said that I wasn't going to be singing for a long time. And uh, they actually said if I ever had a chance of singing again as a last resort, I would need surgery on my vocal cords. And So on May 17th of 2007, I was actually supposed to be in the studio beginning work on my record, uh, Something to Say. Instead, I was being wheeled in for surgery on my vocal cords and being told that I had nothing to say. And you know, uh, don't don't you ask God why? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I I was just at a point where I was going, okay, I'm heading down this path. I'm using my gifts for you. Um, wh what's the deal here? You know, you've put these dreams in my heart, and now it felt like all my dreams were kind of being taken away from me. And uh, man, I was leveled. I was totally and completely helpless, like I'd never felt in my life before, and, and really just asking God, okay, now what, you know, and really thinking that maybe I had sung my last song, and how am I going to provide for my family? You know, a construction worker hurts his back, he's out of a job, you know, a singer loses his voice, and this could be, you know, the end for my career. So I found myself in a, a pretty helpless place, and um, I had that surgery on May 17th, and uh, what followed after that was a couple months of total and complete silence. As my voice recovered, I wasn't sure if the surgery was a success, but I had to be completely and totally silent. No talking, no singing. I had a dry erase board and a marker, and that's how I communicated with my family. That was probably um, the most definitive change in my life, is that for the first time in a long time, I was brought to a place where it wasn't me doing all the talking. And God really used that season, um, I call it my season of silence, because that's what it was. Is he used that season to show me um, just how seldom I stay in God's presence long enough to allow Him to speak into my life. But that even, you know, whether I'm going through my daily life or I'm actually stopping and having a quiet time, um, my even my time alone with God typically consists of me reading my laundry list of prayer requests or even giving thanks, but it's I'm talking and I'm like, okay, thanks, God, or God, help me get through this, and then he brings me through a trial. Okay, thanks, God, see you later. And through this experience, I felt like maybe all along God's been saying, hey, stay a while, be with me. Listen to my scriptures that say, be still and know that I am God. And I rewrote that scripture in my journal, just be still, be silent and know that I am God, and, and I had no choice. But it wound up being one of the most enriching seasons of my life because I was just reminded that I serve a God who, one, can do the impossible in our lives, and he healed my voice, and he brought me back from what I thought was career-ending surgery. And two, not only does he walk with us through those difficult seasons in our lives, but he promises that if we trust him with those broken seasons, he can do an amazing work in our lives. And that's typically those defining moments, those worst things that happen to us that really begin to shape who we are and who we are in Christ. And it's crazy to think about it, but now I'm a singer with some surgically repaired vocal cords and I wouldn't change it for the world. It was, an, it was a life-changing experience. And, and you know, the, the irony is, is you can see God bring you through an impossible circumstance in your life. And in those moments, I think, man, I will never forget this, you know, and my trust in you will never waver again. And then you get a few steps removed from that, that dark season of your life, and suddenly, you know, 
we forget what's over our shoulder. We forget to look behind us. So when we step into that next difficult situation, it's, it's like I try to bring myself back. And there's times where I feel like, God, I, how do I, I, I was at a place of real desperation there. And it was in those times of desperation that I could do nothing but look to him and say, I need you. The truth is, is on our own, we can't, we can't stand and let alone live a life with any type of impact or eternal impact. This new album, The Story of Your Life, uh, this is a story of not just your life. Right. This is a story of a lot of people's lives. Uh, uh, well, tell me a little bit about that process. Well, you know, the last record was called Something to Say, and in a lot of ways it was a, a very personal statement for me, obviously, because here I was just being overjoyed that I was given a clean bill of health and I'm singing again, and um, a lot of the songs really came out of that personal struggle of just realizing who's in charge and, and that I do have something to say, even if my voice is taken away, I, I got to trust that God is going to speak through my life. So I felt like God was laying it on my heart to take the next step from encouraging people that they have something to say to let them say it. And uh, with that, I set out on sort of a scary journey in, in, in that I gave up control because I know how to write songs about my own life. I know how to write songs about the things that I experience. But uh, with this, I began asking people to send me their story. And uh, I leaked it on Twitter and Facebook. I just said, hey, I'm going to make a record called The Story of Your Life, and I want the songs to be inspired by you, the people that listen to my music. So send me your story. And we created this thing on my website where people could type in their story. In the first two days, I received 1,000 stories. And all in, I received 10,000 stories. Wow. And it blew me away. And so I was originally supposed to spend 30 days in the cabin. And I, I booked it for another month because <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not a fast reader. And I had 10,000 stories. Read through. I read every single one. Every single one. Of them. And I got to tell you, it was, it was unbelievable. Because what, it, what I was reading was the story I just shared with you about my vocal surgery I started realizing, man, like everybody has these like defining moments in their lives. And sometimes they're moments of joy and victory. But by and large, I realized when, when you ask somebody, when you open up the door and say, well, tell me a moment that shaped your life. Tell me a defining moment in your life. You might more often go to one of those weaker moments that I shared, you know, that worst thing that happened to you that wound up being a moment where God really showed up and redeemed. And uh, so it was, uh, it was some intense reading. It was, I found myself being really honored by the fact that I was just humbled that people were opening up this window into their lives. The story of your life, you decide how the rest is going. This is your chance between the lines to redefine the kind of legacy. One story you can pull out of there that maybe uh, touched you? Or, well, I know a lot of them did. Yeah, but wow. Does one of them maybe stand out? That, uh, that was, and that, well, even that question was, that was kind of the question that led to me picking which songs were going to make the record because. Sure. I wrote about 36 songs and started about 100 more. And I was joking with the label saying, this could be a record with 150 songs on it. <laughs> but it was so hard to pick which songs should make the record. But there was one story that to me spoke uh, just a true message of redemption, even in the dysfunction that is our lives sometimes. And this one woman, she, she sent her story in and she said, my childhood was defined by alcoholism, suicide, homosexuality. My childhood was complete and totally dysfunctional, and it was sure to lead to a legacy filled with regrets. That was my legacy, was the family that I had. She said, at one poignant moment in my life, my father was dying of AIDS, and I went to visit him by his bedside, and I'm talking with him and his partner. And outside the room, my mom, is having an argument with her, with her husband. And I'm standing there thinking, this is a moment that embodies the very sad reality that was my childhood. I can remember this story word for word. And, and she said, in that moment, my, my father's partner looked at me and said, well, 
I guess this is the legacy you have. And she said, I responded with a resign. Yeah, I guess so. And then she went on and said this, but in that moment with a clarity that has never been matched since, I felt God speak to my heart, no, this is not your legacy. You have a new legacy because you are my child and you are loved. And the last line of her story says, that has made all the difference in my life now and for eternity. Just the reality of just going, man, when God gets a hold of your life, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you came from, where you've been, it doesn't matter what kind of reputation you or your family have, a new legacy begins right there. And uh, you all, know, that, thing, all things are made new. It, absolutely. And so I, I wrote a song called Family Tree. It's mm -hmm. going to be on the record. And I can't wait for, you know, the girl that inspired that story to oh, hear that song, you know. Yeah. This has been one of those projects where a lot of times I, I would write songs, you know, hoping that the masses would love and accept them. And this time, I still hope that's true, obviously. Sure. But I'm most excited to, like, sit with the person that inspired the song and go, Hey, listen to this, you know, did I, did I tell your story, you know, the way you want, you know. So there's a new, ex there's kind of that added element of excitement for that small group of people, that 10,000. Tell me about the first single. Well, the first single is a song called My Own Little World. And I felt like it was important to, instead of just diving right into the songs inspired by that one specific story, I sort of wanted to set the table. And so My Own Little world, world sort of sets the table in that this is the song I wrote um, that talks about how reading all of these stories, how being invited into the lives and maybe the harder parts of these people's lives has impacted me. And, you know, to be totally honest, I think I got really humbled in the cabin because for two months I was forced to look at the difficult parts of people's lives. And um, I started to realize just how sheltered I can allow my life as a Christian singer to become. And, you know, I think there's been times in my career where I think, you know, I'll hear this voice that kind of whispers to me, oh, you're just a Christian singer. You're just preaching to the choir. You sing in churches and, you know, you're on Christian radio, but you're not reaching the lost. You're just preaching to the choir. And then I read 10,000 stories from people that are in the church because that's how they heard about the contest, from a Christian radio station or from my website, fans who buy my records. And I started reading about what they've gone through. And I thought, I'll never look at my audience the same way again. More importantly, I don't think I can look at the world the same way again, because I felt like God opened my eyes to see the sorrow of other people. And it, and it I just my heart cry became, Father, break my heart for what breaks yours, and help me see beyond my own little world. And so that's kind of the message of this first song, of just saying, the first verse says, uh, in my own little world, it hardly ever rains. I've never gone hungry. I've always felt safe. I got some money in my pocket and shoes on my feet. In my own little world, population me. And uh, the song goes on to talk about how, show me that my own little world needs to be bigger than population me. It needs to be not about me at all. It needs to be about me seeing the world through God's eyes and asking him to give me the strength to make a change. And the change begins by telling the story of my life. And that's kind of the hope when people hear this record that they'll go, man, I got a story to tell. God could use me too. Great, thank you for being with us today. My pleasure, thanks for letting me share my heart. Work is a greater purpose that I could believe.